Well, broad smiles are on the faces of West Indies fans and the players throughout the cricketing world. The West Indies completing a 3-0 series sweep to beat Sri Lanka and win the 50-over series. Congratulations to them. I'm Barry Wilkinson. Welcome to On Tour. We look back at that Sri Lanka-West Indies series and the last, of course, ODI, when they won quite comfortably at North Sound. A look at the scorecard. It tells the tale. Sri Lanka, 274 for six off their 50, getting away again. Of course, they were dung and out at one stage, but a brilliant partnership there between Hasaranga the Silva, who made on a beat in 80, and Ashin Bandara, who made 55 not out. It actually took them from 151 for six to 274 without further loss. Earlier, Akil Hussein, he threatened with three for 33 after Ganathilaka, he made it 36. The West Indies then, 276 for five. Not a bad opening stand, but really, they were led by Darren Bravo's fourth century at that level. He made 102 from 132 balls, five fours and four sixes. And the West Indies were able to get home thanks to Shea Hope, Mr. Consistent, 64 he made. And then Kyron Pollard, a typically aggressive, if not responsible, unbeaten 53. The Windies there winning by five wickets with some nine balls to spare. What a great game. Great captaincy by the captain, Kyron Pollard. And you have to say the attitude in the team does certainly look very good. Let's join our panel, of course, former West Indies and Barbados opening batsman, Philo Wallace. Our international correspondent is the BBC's Johnny Barron. And our regional correspondent is Vinod Mamchan, who, of course, is covering the series. Gentlemen, a pleasant hello to you. Philo, I'll start with you first of all. Does the victory please you and the manner in which the West Indies have been able to win this uh, three-match series? Well, Barry, first of all, let me congratulate the West Indies for clean sweeping this uh, one-day series. Uh, I thought it was clinical. We had some heart-wrenching moments, but we held on nerves and we came out on skiv. When you look at the performances, Barry, you can see that that never-die attitude. We want to win. They know the importance, obviously, of winning these ODIs. It's all playing for, to get up to that World Cup. So I, I thought the attitude was good. Uh, there's still some questions about Pollard's captaincy as well and his batting, but I thought in a, in a team performance, you have to commend the team for really weathering the storm against Sri Lanka. Uh, Johnny Barron, yeah, Philo just kind of alluded to it. Um, you know, you look at that important ICC rankings, those ICC points tables, no games are dead rubbers anymore. And uh, when you look at that ranking, of course, the, the rankings we're looking at is prior to this match. But West Indies now have 30 points. Um, the top eight go through to the World Cup in 2023. All of these points are crucial. How do you assess this victory for West Indies and indeed the defeat for, for Sri Lanka? I mean, it was a really impressive win uh, for the West Indies. I just thought tactically very very astute they took the Sri Lankan spinners out of the series just one wicket actually fell to a spinner Sandakan before this ODI and two fell in this this ODI so they actually took you know the, the Sri Lankan spinners only took three wickets across the series whereas actually funny enough the West Indies took 11 they outspun Sri Lanka which is really impressive and they squeezed Sri Lanka in those middle overs that was key really astute from the West Indies and those wins so valuable 30 points going in to the campaign brilliant uh, Vinod, you say A, you must say B. We're going to start with you on this particular question. Uh, the West Indies still showing that while they can squeeze the Sri Lankans, there are still some issues with the death bowling. Um, on all three occasions, Sri Lanka actually got away. Uh, they were strangled, but then they had big partnerships in the end. Yesterday, it was Hasaranga and De Silva, and they actually put on a pretty big seven wicket stand of 123. How do you view the West Indies problems in terms of the uh, not being able to close out the, the teams when they have them in a very um, good position to, to bowl them up for a cheap score? Well, Barry, it seems to be a problem that has been happening and not only this series, but uh, over the, in recent times. You know, West Indies will have teams five down for 100 and that they would go on to get 300, 400 even in the test matches. <clears throat> Excuse me, but at the end of the day, I, I think it's something that reared its head in this series. But the West Indies was just too strong for Sri Lanka in this series, and I think that it's something that will be noted. And uh, probably different options uh, if Pollard has whatever reserves he has available to him, 
probably using them at different times and you know strategically um, mixing his bowlers around uh, we may still have that potency towards the back how good to you fellow is Hasaranga de Silva as a batsman as a former batsman yourself what is his strength because he he certainly played with a lot of freedom um, in this particular game to get his unbeaten 80. Barry also he also by the through an injury <laughs> which is which That's is very right. brave for him and he's a little man no no disrespect he's a very he's a little man with a big heart and he's a, he's a lion. He's not a big grown lion, but he's a lion. He, you can see that they play for, he plays for Sri Lanka. He plays cricket for Sri Lanka. And he executed for wonderful shots for a little man. He packs a good punch as well. So he's no slouch. And he is one, obviously, that Sri Lanka's cricket has to build around. He carries the attitude that you really want to see in international cricket, that, that never die attitude. And despite being injured, Barry, he was still on that field fighting for his country, which is commendable for him. So I think he has a big role to play in the upcoming test series. I, I fast forward to Vinod. The West Indies made uh, a very strange change. It, it initially, the Trinidadian Anderson Philip uh, was not in the squad. He was added to the squad. He actually made his debut. Um, none for 43 on debut. But your thoughts on Philip Vinod on his um, first chance to play for the West Indies. Well, what was the big rush to have him play? Well, firstly, let me say congratulations to Anderson Philip for you know attaining that level now. He is now an ODI cricketer for the West Indies. I was a bit surprised, as I'm sure many people were, when Anderson Phillips was added at that point in time. Um, I thought that they might have gone for um, Kyle Myers, who was actually on the team, and uh, you were swapping yes. all around for all around that. One wonders, though, if the West Indies selectors wanted an out-and-out -out fast bowler as opposed to another all-rounder, because there are so many all-rounders on this team. That could have been the only reason, um, but I was really taken by surprise. Your thoughts um, from seeing him for the first time, um, Johnny Barron, because I know that when you track these international players, you do your research, but you would have had a little video to analyze Anderson Phillips. Yeah, I thought he he bowled pretty well. It's always a, a fairly nerve wracking experience coming to the side for the first time, and he actually actually the the surface that he, that he played on this time sort of offered a, a little bit more assistance than the first two that we saw in the first two ODIs, and a little bit more pace and bounce. And I thought he bowled pretty well, but actually, I think the Sri Lankans actually they enjoy pace on the ball, don't they? They've gone quite nicely against the out and out quicks through the course of this of this series. And I think, uh, and I think Phillips did pretty well, but uh, it's you know all part of a rich learning curve for him. Uh, Philip, there, there's just there just seems to be so many uh, options when it comes to left arm spin now in the Caribbean. Uh, Carrie Pierre, you've got the same uh, Akil Hussein who who played yesterday and got through for thirty three. Um, there's also, of course, Jamal Warrikan who's uh, playing in the Test team. How did Hussein hold up? He, he was roughed up in the first couple of balls, but he then had this impeccable line and length. Your thoughts? Akil Hussein is a very good cricketer, Barry, and he also represented my club Spartan when he was in Barbados with the HBC. Yes. And he did yes. wonderfully well with the bat and ball. He's a good cricketer, and he's come over his, he's overcome his challenges, and he's really rising to the occasion. Yes, he's now boxed out Carrie Pierre, who used to be the left-arm spinner that they, that they opted for, but he's coming and he held his own. He has good, he, he, he has good stamina as well. He, he does, he's not ruffled and he's a believer in himself. He believes that when he gets that ball in his left hand, he is going to spin and get wickets. And that is the key to him. And, he, and he's a brilliant fielder. And he has the support of many Trinidadians around him. And the captain obviously knows him well because they're both from Queen's Park. And you will see Darren Bravo as well, another Queen's Park player. They will come around and support him. And that is important. When you have that kind of support in the team for you and you know your ability, it's just about executing. And I thought his executions were very good. And one of the things that I really love about him yesterday is that his arm ball was on point. Every time he produced that arm ball, he got a wicket. Indeed. Um, I'm going to bring up a point in the next segment about that because it seems that the selection process is, seems true to form and is indeed working, as we've seen with the, the players in the team. We'll talk about that when we come back on tour. The West Indies chasing 275. We've got their innings coming up next. Stay with us. Put up your hand, it's time to party Turn it up to the top, it's time to jump up People, are you ready? Windy's in the land of put up your hand so welcome back then to On Tour. The West Indies winning there by five wickets, winning the three-match series 3-0. Uh, I go straight to you, Vinod Mamchand. West Indies chasing 275. 
you look at the selection process, which seems true to form, it seems to be working. Trinidad and Tobago, they won the CG Insurance, of course, 50 over title, and they have the majority of players in the team, which reflect the fact that they're a quite strong unit. Let's talk about Darren Bravo. We need to spend some time on him. Recall to the test team, many people wanted to know why uh, he hasn't done very well in test cricket, but the captain, the coach, and the chief selector obviously see something in his form, and he didn't disappoint them yesterday. 102, his fourth ODI century, He's passed 3,000 runs now in this level of cricket, uh, five fours and four sixes. And Vinod, he certainly has tuned up for the Test Series which starts on Sunday. Yeah, definitely, you know, he has tuned up. Um, one wonders if Bravo took the last game yesterday as something of a trial, something uh, that, you know, he had to send a signal to the West City team. I don't think his selection is automatic on the Test team, the final 11. And I think he did what was right. He addressed the selectors during this ODI series. I know it's ODI cricket, uh, but still, uh, he did show them that he's in form and that he's willing to bat for long periods. He actually faced, I think, 131 deliveries for that century. Yeah, and 132. Then, you know, Bravo did 132. Well, he, he did what he had to do. And um, he has now addressed the selectors, which is, which is very good for West Indies cricket because we need that experience in the middle order. At one stage, fellow, he was criticised by the commentators for the, the amount of dot balls he soaked up. Was that crucial in the end, and how can he rectify that problem? I don't think it was crucial in the end, Barry. I think that with Darren Bravo, he likes to hit a lot of sixes and fours nowadays. In the early stages of his career, he used to stroke the ball a lot nicer. Now he looks to power the ball. And, and when you saw him team up with Pollard, who knows him well, again from Queen's Park Cricket Club, Pollard pushed him to run ones and twos. And that got his momentum going. And I would like Darren Bravo to understand that if you're going to bat in the red ball in a test match, you have to bat long and you have to run a lot of singles and twos because there'll be a more defensive team field placing in the, in the, in the test matches. So yesterday, with Pollard's, when Pollard walked to the, the crease, he realized, look, let's get some ones and twos here and push Bravo, who's a little lazy. And it worked for Bravo in the end because he then started to flow. So it's important that he understands his game and I'm happy that he scored 100. I'm, I'm with Vino too. He's not automatic choice for the Test 11, but he's made a statement. He scored 100 off of Sri Lanka against the spinners, who's been giving us some problems. So he has put his hand up and said, look, I can handle the slow bowling that Sri Lanka is going to throw at us coming, starting that Test series. So it's a good 100, and I just hope he can build on it and move forward with his career. Uh, Johnny, this is his first century since June 2016. I mean, yes, he's been out of the game for quite some time, but would that play on his mind that Shea Hope started after him and now has 10 centuries, he's just got four? How would that play on his mind? I think, I mean, it was a, a very, very important uh, innings for Bravo, especially when you consider his recent form in the game. He averages just 19 in his previous 10 ODIs, and there was plenty of criticism of his selection in this side, and, of course, his selection... In the, in the test side as well, but or the test squad, I should say, but this will give him enormous confidence because this was, I mean, it was to some extent a test style innings, uh, you know, so lots of watchful batting, some huge hitting when required. Um, he, I mean, the one criticism you could possibly level is that he didn't finish it off. That was one of the West Indies problems through the course of this innings. They didn't have somebody who was doing it throughout the course of the innings there at the end. And I think to get out in the 47th over was a, a touch careless and put West Indies under a little bit more pressure than they needed. But really a hundred, an outstanding hundred, um, it will give him enormous confidence going forward. Vinod, he had two key partnerships. Let's talk about the one with Shea Hope, 109 partnership. Shea Hope, six consecutive half centuries. Uh, he joins a list, and look at that list, a list of 10, uh, in the top 10 of batsmen who have only done it in their career, um, scored 10, six consecutive half centuries. Shea Hope made 64. Again, a very polished innings from Shea Hope. Your thoughts on this young Barbadian, uh, from who, of course, who has been playing uh, cricket around the world? I said before, you know, on the previous in interview, Barry, that, uh, you know, this young man is really brilliant. I think he's the best batsman that we have in the Caribbean at the moment. And <clears throat> batting, Bravo, Bravo batting with him would have helped him because, you know, Sheho was just e oozing confidence throughout this entire series. And that worked for Bravo. And then Pollard, as, as, as uh, fellow said, was able to, to push him, to ignite him. But to be honest, um, they has, you know, you just can't describe this young man anymore. And uh, 
what I love about him is his consistency. And uh, once he's within the team setup and the other players realize just how consistent this young man is, one hopes that, you know, they can take soup and they can follow soup from him. And that level of consistency comes into West Indies cricket. The West Indies team was never a team that couldn't beat anybody in the world. But what we have been crying out for is consistency. You're right. You're very right. Um, you know, uh, fellow, I, I push this one at you now. The captain, Pollard, you said he had some issues with him. But his, his batting in terms of his responsibility yesterday, 53 not out, seeing the team home, uh, he seemed to have, have played a different kind of innings, he, even though he still had his his typical Tyron Pollard uh, sixes in between. Your thoughts on him? Yeah, Barry, what, what I take about Tyron Pollard is that he should have a settled position in the batting order and let things happen around him. I think too many times you see him dancing up and down that order. And I would like him to just say, I'm going to bat at number five and that's it and bat around me. I thought yesterday he, he came and he read the situation well. He... Sri Lanka ran at him. The Sri Lankans ran at him. The ball short balls and he weathered the storm. And then he gets secured the pull shot and that pushed them back. But the running between the wickets and the, and, the, and the experience that he's shown yesterday was good. My other problem that I have with Pollard is that he bowls in between. I, I, think, he, I think he's an effective bowler. People look at him as, you know, as a, a, a bits and pieces bowler, but he gets the job done. He, he takes wickets. And I find that sometimes he can bowl a bit more to bring in, to really bring in his, his all wrong cricket. And, and, and show the guys, look, I can do it, you can do it too. That's what I want to see from him. But I thought yesterday he came in and he read the situation well with Dan Bravo and he, and he took the game away from the Sri Lankans. And once Paul is there, they're not going to bowl half volleys or length balls. So they had to look for something no. else. And I find that the Sri Lankan bowlers error a lot on, on the full side and he punished them. And I commend them yesterday and I'm happy that they've won the series 3-0 and he has done his job as the ODI captain. And let's hope now that this victory can dominate can domino into our test team yeah that's right i mean bangladesh they defeated them 2-0 they defeated sri lanka 2-1 in the t20s and they've just defeated uh sri lanka 3-0 in the uh odi series it's not often that the west indies are on that kind of winning streak um and albeit against team a team that is indeed ranked higher above them so they do have something to to work with and they have things going for them when we come back on on tour we'll hear from the man of the match and also the captains. Stay with us. So welcome back then to On Tour, a commanding innings there from Darren Bravo. Let's hear from him and of course, the captains of the team. Looking at the recent success that the West Indies team has achieved in ODI cricket, a lot of that success uh, has come from batsmen scoring centuries. Seems to be a little bit contagious now. Were you inspired by anyone? Yeah, most definitely. Um, as I said in a previous interview, that you know, Shea Hope you know, sort of gave us that sort of motivation to go out there and do well. Um, in our team meeting, we try our best to you know, come up with decent batting plans, for whatever the opposition may be. Um, obviously, Shea did well. Evan got one in the second game, and we knew that we needed a big partnership in this particular game and someone needed to through the innings and today was my day and I'm grateful for that. Yeah, we looked at your innings and you came in at number four and you had to work really hard to keep that strike rate according to what the required rate was. Is that something on your mind when you bat the linear innings that you feel the need to match your strike rate with the required rate in the situation? Uh, not, not really. Um, I think for, for me as a batter, I think it's important that I give myself the best, best opportunity to get in. I think um, as long as I'm there, runs will come. I'm quite capable of catching up in the back end. Um, obviously, you want to rotate a strike because you don't want the other batter in the other end to be stagnant as well. You want that sort of flow. And um, I think I, I tried my best today. It wasn't the most fluent, but at the end of the day, we get the job done, which is the most important thing. We've got uh, the captain of the Sri Lanka team, Dimut Karuna Ratna, who will join me for a chat. It's been a tough series for him. Dimut, tough luck again today. I know that you won the toss in that first ODI match. Had you won the toss today, what would have been your decision? So we will uh, definitely ball first because I think uh, the wicket is getting uh, 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 fla getting flat uh, in the later part. Uh, in the in the morning, it's not easy. It's not coming nicely to the bat. Uh, we were we were trying hard to get some runs, uh, and even the spinners, it's not easy to bat. Uh, we knew uh, we need uh, 275 plus runs, so we were keep trying to get uh, those momentum in the mid middle overs. But uh, unfortunately, we lost a couple of wickets. You keep increasing your win percentage as a captain. What has made you so competitive as a ODI team? 
Um, I just think hard work. Um, obviously, we identified the start you know, of our tenure, what we needed to do, and um, I think that was getting a start, you know, getting guys to you know, bat and bat 50 overs and bat long, and we have identified you know, Hopi, and he has done a fantastic job for us ever since. So that has laid the foundation for us more often than not, you know, to come and the guys in the middle order play their natural games. 11 wins from 17 matches, a win percentage of 64. Let's focus on this game. Again, you won the toss, you opted to bowl first. Do you ever worry about your team not being versatile to bat first? Um, we don't have time to think about that. Um, I know the batters was very upset with me this morning. Um, you know, coming here, they thought we were going to bat first. But again, I thought, as I said, our best chance of winning against Sri Lanka, you know, they don't know what is a good total to post up. And, you know, with the batting that we have and the depth that we have, you know, once we lay that foundation and we keep wickets in hand more often than not, once you limit them to under 250, just around 270, as we did, we're always in for a chance. So, again, you know, we have to play it as we see it and, you know, where we are strong, you know, as a team. But, you know, I would love to see us bat first. But, you know, we're going, you know, all in today and, you know, well done to the guys. You sparked century scoring in this ODI team, Lewis, Hope, Bravo. What's been the recipe for that type of success? Again, these guys have been working, you know, really, really hard. Um, you know, competition, you know, for places, you know, as well. And, you know, guys want to stick their neck up. So, um, you know, we spoke about, you know, one guy, you know, batting through the order, batting deep as possible. And, you know, it's very, very nice to see each and every, you know, game we got 100. You know, um, Hopi in the first game, Evan in the second, and now Brav, you know, in this one. So that means, you know, the guys are really focused on, you know, what they want to do and what they want to achieve. And, you know, just for the back end to try to finish it off. So, again, it's just total team effort, you know, from us. The guys, you know, bowl well. I thought we were a bit, you know, not executing our Yorkers and our, our deliveries in the back end of the innings. It cost us about 25, 30 runs. So that wasn't, you know, good for us going into the half. But, you know, the guys came out and, you know, we really play as a team. You know, when the bowlers fall to the batters, take up the mantle. Wonderful stuff. We must also congratulate Shea Hope. He was, of course, the player of the series. He had the most runs and he indeed deserved that title. Let's wrap it up now. Philo, I'll start with you first of all. The test series starts on Sunday. The West Indies now have to flip the script. But how much would this victory and this streak of winning series be a fillip for them into that test series? Well, by one view, you could say about West Indies cricket at the moment is that they are consistently winning matches. Uh, there's a new captain, a new test captain, Craig Braffitt. He's fully appointed now. I, mean, I hope that what he can learn uh, from this ODI series, he has Jason Holder, who is the former captain. He'll be with him. They both know each other for a very long time. And I would believe that Jason would be helping Craig in, in, in that test series and obviously working out with the best strategies in relation to bowling and batting the Sri Lankans. So I just want to say to the test squad, best wishes and all the very best and put the best foot forward. Maybe forward or back foot, but make sure to do the business for West Indies and continue to win. I, Johnny, I, I, I'm being balanced here. Sri Lanka have been severely curtailed. They have been crippled almost with a lot of injuries. Is that going to be on their mind going into this test series? Uh, Sri Lanka have had a bit of a tough, tough, tough year from a test cricket point of view. They got humbled in South Africa and they lost 2-0, of, of course, at home at England. And they haven't had a particularly good tour thus far here, just winning one game in the six games so far. But they will take a bit of confidence going in, into the next game in that they, they get their left armour back in the side. Embel Denya, who's got a wonderful record in test cricket. He's got 45 wickets in nine games and also picked up 15 wickets in the two tests against England. I expect him to play a major role. And it is difficult for Sri Lanka without the loss of, of so many experienced players. And uh, you just hope they, they really pull together and put in a strong performance. But they're not to be underestimated this side. They did perform for, for large parts pretty well against England. And they'll be hoping to do the same again against the West Indies. Vinod, 2-0 in the Test Series, one all, or how do you see it? I think the West Indies definitely win this Test Series. I think they will, they will win both Test matches. <clears throat> I'm happy at the, the matches we played at North Song, where um, you know it's not just going to be the spinners coming into the action. The, the North Song track has something for everyone who is willing to work. And I think that could work in the West Indies' favour. But as uh, Philo was saying, you know, uh, you want to continue winning. The ODI team, they have, they have done it. They have put Sri Lanka on the back foot for the Test team. And now the West Indies have won seven out of eight matches <clears throat> across all formats, you know, going into this test series now. Uh, I think, um, you know, Greg Rafferty and his boys, they won't want to be the team uh, that lets the West Indies down. Well said. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen. We're going to take a week's break. 
come back, refreshed ourselves, and then we'll be back with On Tour on Monday next week, which will be, of course, uh, looking after the first day of the f f first test. I'm Barry Wilkinson. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next week, then. Bye bye for now.